We all have a mission in life. I am a philanthropist because I love to do good for the world. I am an activist. I am a savior. I am an endurance athlete. think that you're going to help somebody who needs help and then at the end you are the one that is most helped. She touches people's lives. She gives you the opportunity to attempt things that are hard. Sometimes the hardest things in life turn out to be the best. the South Beach Triathlon in April of 2014. And that was probably one of those most exciting races of my life. I told Carrie, I have no idea what I'm doing. The more barriers I put in front of her, the more, the happier she was about doing this. We finished the triathlon and we knew we had hit on something, you know, that, that desire of people to participate and to help and to be a part, like it was just too big. It took an army to make this happen. And not just because it was difficult, but because we had an army of people that wanted to help. We did this and the more people became involved and sooner or later we said, you know, it's, it's too big. We need to, we need to give other people the opportunity to help. Like, why is it always me? Like, why am I the privileged one to, to do most of the races with Carrie? Like, this has to be more open because also that sense of gratitude and that sense of empowerment that I get, like, other people should be able to feel this. experiencia mayor eh, ha sido el Ironman, por lógica, es una competencia muy larga. Yo sufrí mucho. Nervous. I didn't feel nervous about getting through 140.6 miles. I felt nervous that the waves were rolling like this. So we get in the water and the gun goes off and the race starts. and a wave just comes, and it comes and it lifts the boat behind me. Oh my God. go to take a stroke to swim to her and I realized that the rope was wrapped around my neck. So I tried to stand up and another wave came and it choked me. Choked 
to unravel the rope, got it up off and started to swim to carry. By that point already, the lifeguards, they had gotten to her and part of our support staff and they flipped her. And of course, their first thing is, is she responsive, is she okay? So they say, Carrie, are you okay? Are you okay? I said, of course. <laughs> Just like that, unfazed, no emotion, no concern. We put Carrie in the boat and I look at her and she looks at me. And so we just knew we were both okay. And we just shook our head and we went. So at the beginning of the marathon, I think just sort of our hearts were pumping. We were excited. Carrie was freezing. And then as we started going, it just, our run was very light. It was airy, it was fun. There was tons of laughter. Miles just kept coming by. When I got to mile 11 and I was feeling great and laughing and talking and we were taking pictures, I was so surprised that when I got to mile 13 and there's a split off around that area, I was supposed to stop and Holly was going to continue. And I remember saying, oh, I'll just go one more mile. When we got to Key Biscayne and we were 10 miles away, I said, I think, I think I may do the whole thing. It was amazing the cheers, the cheers that Carrie receives when you're going, all these strangers yelling and their thumbs up and clapping. Termina como, como si paz. Pero a la vez que terminas tan cansado y agotado, es como que recibes esa alegría. Porque es el esfuerzo de, de, de otros for ayudar a otros, realmente la energía que se recibe en esos lugares como que una energía que te llena, que te enciende. In my dreams, I am not disabled. Or being disabled is not a bad a dream I can follow. I dream I'm sailing, because that's where I dance. I dance with the wind and the wave. My body is almost a mobile. On the water, I can move with the boat. And I dream of how much I can help people. You 
learned from her that she has this grace and she has this vision, but um, you know, and, and this generosity of spirit. So you're kind of awestruck, you know, and um, and I was awestruck, and I learned from Carrie very uh, like incredible lessons. Like some of the, you know, one of them being that when you ask for help, you are actually giving a gift for another person because when I help somebody, I feel good. But if I can't help somebody, I don't have that feeling of feeling good. And that was, like, it's one of those little nuggets that has changed my life, you know, so it makes it easier for me to ask for help when I need help. He aprendido que, claro, si alguien me dice ayuda, ese está ayudando, esa palabra con ella, es como sagrada. Ayuda, te ayudan. Ayudar es como un esquema y aprendí de que ayudar, recibir ayuda de otro es bueno y que otros quieran decirte te ayudo también es bueno porque ese que ayuda yo sé que es alguien que va a enseñar a ayudar a otro y así es como una cadena se va haciendo como la cadena esa que yo considero tan importante ahora actualmente en la vida de ayudarnos unos a los otros. Y eso yo creo que es una de las cosas más grandes con que he aprendido a su lado. I exhaust myself a lot trying to prove that I can do things by myself. And the only person I'm proving it to is me. She's helped me to analyze that about me. We're not expected to do it all. Um, that's why we have people around us. And I think of all the things that Carrie can't do by herself and how she's okay with it to everyone else. But I, I know that it has to be hard. I think that some people look at asking for help as a sign of weakness or as an inability to complete the task on your own. And I definitely was there. You know, I thought that if I can't do it on my own or I need to ask for help, it wasn't my accomplishment. I understand it because I was there. But what I have come to know and understand is that when you need other people and you let other people come in, you grow as a person. So I think that not being able to ask for help and not being able to understand that everybody has to work together is, is just an evolution as a person. And just being able to have the opportunity to ask for help and knowing how much more that working with another or having another person be a part of your success helps you grow as a person is just something that we have to sort of evolve to and strive for and get to. There's no way that anything can happen without, um, without help. Nobody can do anything alone in this world, in this life. I don't care how independent you are, it's just not going to happen. If you are realistic and you ask for help and you don't, and you accept help, but also you don't expect salvation from anybody from outside of you, then you can do anything. A lot of people are afraid to ask for help. I think some people really want to ask for help, but they're afraid because they're not sure how to approach someone and or who to approach. And they're afraid they're going to say no. And if you're someone who's seeking help and someone denies you help, you go backwards instead of forward. Trust is the basic cement of all relationships of civilization itself. Without trust, nothing works. With trust, everything works. So that's why I think it is one of the basic things that I can show people the importance of, because I have to be able to trust 
malaria. We are trusted carrot in the boat and iron man. Florida. And I trusted malaria and Holly and Christina. Muchos miran a Kerry y ven la fuerza de Kerry haciendo cosas. Y hay personas que la miran, unos la, piensan que ella es incapaz de, ni de hablar y otros piensan que ella no puede hacer nada. Entonces yo que la conozco, el que la conoce sabe que ella es una mujer que ha hecho muchas cosas. Y yo la miro arrepentido, siento que yo de, desde que la levanto la tengo prácticamente sobre mí. La ayudo a, a incorporarse. Después la ayudo a todos a sentarse, a, a todo, a vestirla, a todo, a darle desayuno. Ya cuando era la hora de comida, ayudarla a comer. Es como que tú dices, esta persona me necesita tanto. Y después yo me pregunto muchas veces, bueno, ¿y qué hago para hacerla feliz? Es si la siento triste, puedo, puedo hacerle un chiste o decirle cualquier tontera y ella se empieza a reír. Entonces, siempre es como la lucha por hacerle su vida diferente y por ayudarla también a cumplir sus sueños, por ayudarla a lograr sus metas. Las dos nos damos fuerza. Y ese es Kerry, esa soy yo con Kerry, ayudándola siempre, ella ayudándome a mí. Me ha enseñado eso. Does not make you any less important or strong. In fact, it's a fear of asking for help that stops many people from becoming their full potential. When you ask for help, you make yourself stronger and you also make the person giving it stronger because people love to help. So you're helping them by asking and by receiving. You have to receive with grace. So you have to ask with grace. Echo, me, 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 me. I want, I want, I want. That's not asking. Help. But really asking for help, opening yourself up to another person is an act of grace, an act of strength. It makes everything much stronger, it makes the bonds between people very strong. Mary and I feel very closely connected. Because I asked her to help me. She was able to help me by helping me. She proved to herself her own strength because she was able to finish the Miami Marathon even though she was hurt. have a mission in life. Mine is to get the message across. <laughs>